Hello and welcome to another episode of the Reverse Mental Lab, where we engage with thinkers from around the world to explore how leaders of today can learn from leaders of tomorrow. You're back with your hosts. I'm Joshua. And I'm Jens. Hey Joshua, how are you doing? Good morning. Good morning, bright and early. Um, good to be back with you, Jens. How are you today? I'm great. It's not too bright here. I mean, except my lighting. I'm, I have a blue background today for those who are not watching it on, on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, well, this, uh, this virtual world that we now call home is, is quite an interesting one because uh, you have to almost remind yourself which part of the day you're in, um, unless you like Jens and you've got different lights for different parts of the day. So yeah, it's good to be back with you. <laughs> So what, what, what do we tackle today from a topic perspective? Yeah, so um, it's awesome to be back on another episode of the Reverse Mental Lab. And today we're talking about experimentation. And more specifically, we're going to be chatting about why the most important experiments are often the smallest ones. And this, for those of you who've been listening to some of the episode, links back to other conversations that Jens and I've had about the myth of experimentation. And I'm sure we'll get into some of those uh, elements or some of that way of thinking. Um, as this conversation progresses and as we explore some of the rabbit holes today. But Jens, maybe to kick things off, what is what is experimentation? That's a good question. Love the topic because that's one, one of the things I love to do on a daily basis. And I do this since, I, I would say, 20 years, not as structured as I do it right now. But if for, for me, experimentation is... It starts with like, you have an idea, you have a problem, you have something you want to tackle, you want to solve, you want to figure out doing it differently. And then it's like, you have a couple of ideas how to do that. And for me, the experimentation starts when you think about, okay, how do I tackle this problem? How do I tackle, um, how do I scratch that itch? And then it's about, okay, I have, or at least for me, it's often like, I have a lot of ideas how to do that then I'm, I'm more stepping back in understanding, okay, how can, I, how can I test it as fast as possible to either kill it because the idea is stupid or validating that, hey, there's something in it and it's, it's working. And that's why I love what, what you said, the, the, the smallest parts, the smallest experiments are of the, the most important because you can, you can do things so fast in the world where we're in right now that you get responses straight away. So when I do experiments that let's say social media is one of the examples, I get response uh, within two hours. I know if it's working or it's not working, at least the first iteration stuff. Um, and that's for me always fascinating. If you have the possibility to, to, to increase the learning um, speed through experimentation that will bring you business wise or personal wise to, to different levels very quickly. But what, what is it for you? Yeah, so before answering that, I just want to double click on the word validation quickly and just how you explored that and, you know, you framed experimentation around that. And I think you, you highlighted it already in terms of the speed which we can receive feedback inside of this modern world, inside of the information age. And I think that when you think about experimentation, you maybe need to think along those lines. What are you validating and how are you going about validating it? Because there are key metrics and measures that you can use to get feedback very quickly and to test your assumptions that you're going into situations with, which can then guide and influence your decision making um, going forward. But you know, from a personal standpoint, maybe I'll, I'll try and answer this from a young thinker's perspective. I think experimentation puts young or from a young thinker's perspective, when I think about experimentation, I think about it as how can I approach things differently and how can I approach things with an open mindset to learn as quickly as possible. And I think that inside of experimentations and the end you touched on it and went back to the, the, the topic for today is around the smallest experiments that you take. And I think sometimes when young thinkers come into situations is we think that in order to run experiments, we need to think big and they need to be on a large scale. But if you take the example from a young thinker and you say, I'm interacting with an executive today, how can I maybe include some questions which would test or experiment my learnings and my assumptions that I'm engaging with them in? And how can I then use that feedback to enhance my decision making or to grow as an individual? Another example might be in terms of a personal situation that I found myself in is where I've been given a specific task. And this specific task was around building out a data strategy for a business that I was working at with the time. And I, I didn't have all the answers inside of that space. 
but I was given the freedom to experiment and to trust my own thinking to go down certain avenues and then to bring back and feed back to the experienced thinker or to the management team that I was reporting into at the time. And what did that mean from an overall perspective and how I used experimentation to inform some of the decisions that I was taking at the time. And that, that's exactly what it is for me. It's like get, get, getting, getting this learnings in as fast as possible and understanding of how you can use that from a, from, from a personal growth perspective as a learning, but which, which I think is very, very important for young thinkers to not being scared about putting your opinion out, not being scared about doing something wrong. Because in the end, if you take a whole life, and if I look back, my, I turned 40 last year, I mean, I did so many mistakes, but what what do they say from a 40 years perspective? Like it's nothing. Maybe you're completely down for a day or you, you think you, you have fucked up your life, but literally it's, you can't screw up too much on a day, most of the time at least. I mean, you can, of course, if you do stupid things, but um, from an experimentation perspective, where I would like to double down is, is what I often hear that people are scared to test things. They're scared to put things out that are not perfect, like you like you mentioned. Um, and I think that's really, and we did discuss that um, yesterday when we when we did the X Y Z table as well on uh, innovation culture. So, like, how do you build self confidence that helps you to to test things? And and one good example is like our block experiment we are doing right now. So for those who haven't seen it, we started literally on Monday this week, um, a block experiment because we're writing a book and and what we said is hey we need to we need to test our assumptions. So it's literally experimentation as well on, on the topics of the books on 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 different parts. So what we agreed the two of us is like hey let's 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 write a daily block every one of us. So we're we are literally shooting out blog posts every day now, which for me, um, people who don't know me is like one of the most scary things because I'm crap in writing. So, but but coming back to self confidence for me, it's like hey, I have whatever people say in the whole world about my writing, I don't care, because for me, it's part of an experiment. If I do it daily, it's getting better, and that's for me. The, this self-confidence will help you to to test things in a completely different way than you would normally not do. Because let's say other people might say, hey, I'm not good in writing. I, I don't write in public and I'm definitely not posting it somewhere public. So they, they spent a year on maybe procrastinating, not writing at all or writing for themselves, but they don't get any 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 sense of that topic if it's interesting for other people to read or not. So it's it, for me, it's always a missed out opportunity if you don't experiment. If you try to do something 100% perfect and then put it out into the world, you might have missed opportunities on the way which have, would have made your final product, the 100% version, if you ever get to a 100% version in this world, uh, way better. So that's, that's for me as well, um, interesting thoughts on, hey, if you're self-confident enough, then you put yourself out there, which will help you to get to the next level and then builds more self-confidence. So it's also from an experimentation engine, it's also a supporting mechanism in personal growth and a supporting mechanism in business growth if you do it from a business context. Yeah, and sort of just maybe to expand on that, Jens, is, is I love what you said around sort of building on itself. And I think that that's where this cross-generational learning space that we're engaging in, you know, from a young thinker's and experienced thinker's perspective is unique. Because I think one thing that does come with experience is that you learn which elements to experiment with. And what I mean by that is from an experienced thinker's perspective, you've got years of experience where you've tested various things. Mm -hmm. And now you can feed that back to young thinkers so that they can sort of learn and start to be guided by which things they should be paying more attention to when they are experimenting with their thinking, with the actions that they're doing and things like that. And maybe to, to throw sort of a, a different level of thinking in here, saying around, we're talking about the smallest experiments are often the most important. And there's a famous saying which says that dynamite comes in small packages. And I think that sometimes when we think about experimentation is that we think it needs to be massive. We need to make large scale changes to experiment. 
But if you actually think about the way that science experiments are run, for example, and if you think about, you know, you've got your traditional science uh, laboratory set up and now you're experimenting with different concoctions and different levels of potions that you're putting inside of a, in, inside of a beaker, for example, how a small change can often have a, a huge impact on the experiment that you're running. And I think that's a lesson, although you may think of it as a silly analogy, if you think about that very analogy inside of a business space, how if you changed the color of a button on a website, for example, how might that influence the website traffic? And all that was is you just changed an RGB color inside of the code and it went from red to blue and all of a sudden you saw a, a drastic increase in the conversion rate on your website. Or for example, you maybe gave a young thinker the opportunity to manage or, or moderate a meeting, for example. And inside of that meeting, you unlocked a completely different way of thinking that may have taken the business an extra 10 meetings to get to. But because you did something slightly different and you gave it a bit of a chance, you actually enhanced your business from a growth and an opportunity perspective just because you experimented slightly differently. Yeah, love that. Um, I can give you an example as well from my history on that is I was technical manager of a, of a very large store early on in my career. And I fed the team and, and it was about, hey, how do we save energy? Because it was quite high energy consumption in the building and, and very high energy bill due to that. So what we did was, hey, let's switch off different parts of the building just by trying. So we, we literally just programmed one area of the building slightly different, which took us like two minutes. And I was, I was kind of using my deputy as part of that educational process because he was very young at that time. I mean, I was still young, but he was younger even than, than me, like five years younger. And, and we did just let, let's try it one, one, one day. It's like super small experiment, Noth, nothing is going to happen, which resulted in, in a lot of experiments and in kind of experimentation ways of thinking inside of that team. And we saved um, literally in less than a month, 30,000 euro in energy consumption by just, hey, we're, we're programming things differently. Let's figure out if someone is, is, is seeing the changes or if it's just us saving energy. And super, super small things, just programming things in a different way. Yeah, and that's a great sort of segue to talking about experimentation as more of a mindset than just practical or tangible things that you see yeah. differences in. And I think that, you know, one of the things that I've certainly done is that I've, I've learned to sort of, I've changed from sharing my opinion first to asking a question and then listening to that response. Mm -hmm. And I think that that sort of goes and links back to something that you've mentioned before in the podcast, Jens, but also in broader circles around the importance of listening and the importance of embracing a prototyping and feedback mindset, which can then enhance and fuel your experiments that you're doing going forward. But you know, maybe if you if we just double click on on the word mindset quickly, and we say, what are some of the things that individuals can do to embrace an experiment mindset, and what are some how does that enhance the outputs that can happen inside of a business setting? Yeah, for for, for me, the experimentation mindset starts with uh, just the willingness of trying to do something different. So it's it's this this mindset of of hey, I can do something. Um, whatever big the challenge is, is like everyone in the whole world can do something against climate change and against whatever you don't like in this world. So if you have, if you have something, it's, it just takes one step to do something. So that's, that's for me a starting point in, in everything. It's like, hey, I can make a difference if I just get started. And that will help you to get over the line to say, okay, but what what do what do I do? And then you it's kind of more this this mindset of figuring things out, like hey, i'm I'm just trying something. And it don't need to be scientific. So we like like you said in the beginning, we don't need to put the 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 steps too high for us that hey, it need to be big, it need to be scientifically proven. It's like, hey, just figure things out. And that can be as easy as, hey, I would love to date the other person. How am I going to do this? I just try a different approach and maybe it's, it's, it's working, maybe it's not working. I mean, as easy as, as this small things that helps you to build the, this mindset and then growing into that going forward and you take bigger and bigger and bigger challenges over time. But for me, it's the starting point is really 
first step. What about you? Yeah, yeah and I think I'll, I'll just I'll build off what you mentioned there about the first step. And I think if we take the, the example that I gave an analogy of you inside a scientific lab or a chemistry lab, and now you're setting up your experiment for the first time. And when you go about mixing two components that you've never mixed before, that's often the most riskiest part of it because you don't know how they're going to react. So you don't know whether you're going to blow up this, the, the chemistry lab that you're in or it's going to be the success point that, you, that you're going to you know, have, a revenue, have a revolutionary discovery. And I think that inside of that, there's a big lesson in terms of the way that when we think about experimenting, we often think about the risks of that experiment going wrong. And sure, experiments will go wrong and there will be negative consequences, but by and large, there's always an opportunity to learn from those things. So I think from a mindset perspective, it's maybe acknowledging that things won't always go right. Yeah. And like you mentioned, Jens, is things are barely ever perfect. And I think one of my biggest lessons from, from a close mentor and a very good friend of mine was when he said to me that, you know, good is better than perfect. Because mm. I used to be a perfectionist and I still do have some of those tendencies. But I think that when I started out in my working career, I used to always try and make everything 100%. But very quickly, you learn that if you get something to 80%, that's as good as 120%. Yeah. Because it allows you then to move on to other things inside of your tasks and inside of your way of thinking that you need to do. So, yeah, that's a personal lesson from, from our side in terms of how I changed my mindset around experimentation and things like that. So, Ian, yeah, as we look to sort of draw, draw the episode to a, a, a close here, I'm going to ask you around, you, you're a master of experimentation, you're a master of prototyping. What, um, what challenge do you have for, for the listeners around experimentation? Yeah, I, I need to tackle the experienced thinkers as, as usual. Um, the experienced thinkers, and I have been there myself, you, you might be thinking, yeah, that's all fun stuff if you don't talk about business serious shit. Um, because I'm, let's say, the person is responsible for a large budget, for a lot of people, for a lot of things. And yeah, no, I can't experiment. I think it's 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 really to the point of, and I can't emphasize it enough, just getting started. Pick something that's the least risky for you if you're an experienced thinker and if you think it's you can't do it. Take something that's not scary in the beginning. You don't need to take something that's extremely scary to you. Pick something that's not scary and say, hey, I will try to do that. And it can be as easy, hey, I'm posting something that I would never post on social media. Um, and that's 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 maybe too scary for some people. And maybe it's on the borderline for for some others. But it's always about getting started and then not fearing of what can happen. It's just try something that's not risky and get going and then build from there. That would be my my action point for the experienced thinkers because I know you guys are out there and saying yes, of course they can talk on that a lot on the podcast, but. I have done it myself and I can promise you it's, 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 it's something really exciting if you do that. What about you? What, what, what is your action point? Yeah, so I, I love the, the get starts call to action and also to, to challenge the experience thinkers to think about experimentation slightly differently um, and not in terms of this big thing of not being able to do it because it is so big. I think from a from a young young thinkers perspective, where I'd like to start is around challenging young thinkers to bring in experimentation into their everyday mindset. And what I mean by that is it doesn't necessarily need to be big changes that you're doing, but actively look to experiment with different elements inside of your thinking and also inside, inside of the actions that you're fulfilling, whether it be how you're writing your first uh, essay for your university degree or how are you writing your first email on your job application experiment and try different things inside of that space because if you don't try every if you don't try experiments you know you'll end up with everything that is the same it's always generic and that's one of the biggest things inside of this digital age is i think that it's very easy to fall into this trap of doing the same things in a repetitive stance and challenge yourself to see if there are small things that you can tweak or refine because often those are sometimes where the biggest um, value unlocks lie from an overall perspective. Yeah, I agree. Great session today. So everyone who is listening to this, 
if you're interested in engaging with us, understanding of what the XYZ Playground is, which is a reverse mentorship platform, um, check out the xyzplayground.com. And if you're interested in our blog experiment, because we are talking about experiments today, have a look at the XYZ, xyzplayground.com as well. There you find our blog over there as well. Thanks, Joshua. It was, was a pleasure having an episode to, together with you again. Before we end, we'll chat soon. Thanks for listening and joining us on the journey that is the Reverse Mental Lab. If anything fascinated you in the discussion that we had today, you're welcome to set up a 15-minute coffee chat with us. Our emails are in the show notes, and you can also connect with us on our website, thexyzplayground.com.